please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Right, those are all the top stories that we're tracking. It's time now for movers and shakers. So let's tell you about all the stocks which are buzzing at noon. And Sona is here to tell us what's happening with Moil. Sona. Uh, well, I have two stocks actually, Moil as well as Dalmia Bharat. So for Moil, uh, from 1st March, that is today, the company has increased prices for different products. So in terms of manganese ore, SMGR and in chemical grade, they have increased the prices by 10%. And for fines, they have been increased by 5%. And that's why the stock is up in trade today. For Dalmia Bharat, it is also buzzing because CLSA has initiated a coverage with a buy uh, rating and a target price of 3500 That will That is 33% up uh, uh, ahead of uh, yesterday's uh, closing price. And they say that they see a uh, uh, compounded annual growth rate of 16% for EBITDA and 50% for the EPS for the next two years. And they also think that the EBITDA is higher for this company more than the industry levels because of better blending and fuel mix. Also, the turnaround of the acquired assets that the company has been able to do and also optimization of lead distances. That's why these two stocks are up in trade today. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Sonal. Well, we can't take our eye off PNB because uh, that's such an evolving story. Let's find out what's the latest there in terms of assets that have been attached to Mehul Choksi, etc. Utkarsh joins in to give us an update on that. Utkarsh? Uh, so, remember that on Monday we uh, told you about the fact that in the next two to three days, all the assets of Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi will be attached by the enforcement directorate. Exactly as has happened yesterday, all the uh, properties of Nirav Modi were attached by the enforcement directorate. And today, uh, we see that uh, assets of more than 1,200 crores are being attached in case of Mehul Choksi. Uh, so these are uh, all properties of Mehul Choksi, including his, uh, some flats in Bandra, then he has properties in, in Surat, Nasik, and other tier 2 tier 3 cities, which has been attached by enforcement directorate. Yesterday, it happened the same with Nira Modi. Also, uh, ED has moved court and uh, you know, ED has the permission of letter rogatory. Uh, you know, what that uh, does is that it gives enforcement directorate to really go to other countries and uh, question uh, and get account details from there. So that will be one important step because at this point of time, everything we are looking at is inside the country. So ED can now really, uh, you know, widen the scope of investigation to other countries as well. Uh, also, what happened uh, in the past two days is uh, that the enforcement directed has moved court uh, to issue non billable warnings against Mehul Choksi and Nira Modi. That is, again, one step towards extradition. But, you know, we have seen all these steps, steps taking place in the Vijay Malaya case, and we have still not seen Vijay Malaya come back. So, clearly, this is all of a procedural uh, things. They are moving in a faster pace than it was uh, in the earlier case. Uh, so, let's hope that this time, you know, uh, we, we see Nira Modi really coming back to you know, the country much sooner than uh, Vijay Malaya does. All right, Utkash, thanks very much for that. Uh, meanwhile, auto stocks looking good. Feb has seen uh, some good sales numbers coming in. Sonia, uh, take your pick. What do you want to start with? <laughs> well, you know, uh, after a long time, we can say that across the board, the numbers yeah. have looked good. So this time, I think uh, it's it's good news for the sector as a whole. Let me start off with Bajaj Auto because for the last so many months, Bajaj Auto was, uh, uh, was you know, seeing a, a downtick as far as export sales are concerned. But last two months have been much better. Um, the sales were better than expected, highest sales since October, a very good run rate of 30% and the management did indicate to us that this positive sales run rate will continue next month as well. Next up, I have, um, you know, I'm looking at uh, Maruti sales. The total sales growth has come in at 15%, which was largely in line with what the street was expecting. So no surprises there. But the good part is even in Maruti, the export numbers have picked up quite a bit. So 25% growth is what Maruti has seen in terms of export sales. The medium and heavy commercial vehicle sector has done very well so far and a showcase Leyland case in point is looking very good today. Total sales growth of almost 30%. MHCV, that's medium and heavy commercial vehicle sales, up almost about 21 odd percent. So looking pretty good over there. Uh, we also had sales numbers from escorts. Uh, you know, the tractor maker has done exceptionally well. A 50% plus growth number is what we've seen there. All right, and uh, we also caught up with S. Ravi Kumar, President of Business Development at Bajaj Auto earlier this morning to talk about uh, their plans going ahead. For uh, the second month running, um, it is a uh, 3 lakh uh, 50,000 plus type of a number that we have uh, reported. And I think in March also we should uh, certainly cross that uh, 350 plus and uh, uh, that's, that's what I would say right now. I mean for the last uh, few months when we are talking, we are telling you that uh, 145 to 150 range is what we will uh, deliver. Uh, that is uh, happening um, very nicely. Almost all the markets, um, um, Africa has uh, uh, done very nicely. Bangladesh has done. Nepal is doing well. Philippines is doing well. New markets are uh, adding uh, good numbers. 
Okay, that's a very confident Bajaj Auto telling us that export markets have picked up quite a bit. But the other stock of the day today is Ashoka Bilcon. It's up almost about 6 odd percent. We spoke to the management Satish Parak a while back on the order wins from Macquarie and Jargon, where he expects EPC margins of 12 to 13 percent. It's a huge order that they've won. He also clarifies that there's no equity commitment from the company for this particular project. Listen in. POD is the first of its kind and uh, Makuri has bid for this project and Ashoka is owned and partner in this project. So our part will be EPC to the tune of 1,025 crores in the first two years and we are likely to get ONM for the next 30 years. Also EPC margins as we are doing for all of the projects from 12 to 14 percent. All right, so let's quickly recap then the list of top buzzing stocks. There's PNB, Moil, Dalmia, Bharat, Ashoka, Biltcon, Bajaj Auto, Maruti, Escorts, as well as uh, Ashok Leland. So that's pretty much all the good auto sales numbers that have come into the stocks. Not doing so well. Okay, but I think we need to brace ourselves for a very, very hot summer, right? This time around. I mean, if you thought last year was bad, Indians need to be ready for the heat this summer as well as the Met Department has forecasted a blazing summer across North India. Here's a word coming in from DSPI, the Director Long Range Forecast at the Indian Met Department. Listen in. As per the forecast release, we expect that uh, during the pre monsoon, that is March to May, the average uh, normal temperatures of our meteorological subdivisions, or most of the subdivisions over the country, likely to be in the positive side, that is above normal. However, uh, seasonal average temperature over many subdivisions from northwestern neighboring central India, they are likely to be uh, slightly more than one degree. So as a whole, uh, uh, during these three months, we expect uh, above normal heat wave conditions uh, over a core heat wave monsoon region, that is particularly northwest and central India, Andhra Pradesh, in the south, etc. And as promised, let's get you some opinion now. Just last evening, the Indian GDP numbers crossed the 7% growth mark. After a full year, we had the gross capital formation number, which grew 12%, and that was a pretty uh, big one. A recent report by Kartika Capital maintains that India is one of the best emerging market stories, and in fact, they believe in the long-term growth potential as well. We spoke to Teresa Bhaga, the co-founder and CEO of Kartika Capital, and began by asking her about her view on India. Listen in. Value in the Indian stock market has always been a very difficult term to define. Uh, as you know, India has always, pre, uh, has always um, traded more expensive than any other market. Um, but yes, with the U.S. down less than 4% and the MSCI EM down uh, four and a quarter percent, but India down five and a quarter percent. It really it was a bad showing. And I think, from my point of view, the issue really is uh, what's happened to sentiment this year. Uh, it is possible that we're going to get the reverse of what we had last year. How are you looking at the recent developments in India, especially with regard to the banking sector and that uh, big fraud uh, in PNB? Is it a system yes. systemic issue? Yes, yeah, so um, from my point of view, uh, in February particularly, uh, India had three own goals. From the Mundra UMPP, and in fact, Tata Power, we should get that uh, stock up for you on board. It is reacting to this news right now. It's seen a sudden surge up almost about 1.5%. Recently, in fact, a lot of brokerages upgraded or rather raised their target prices on Tata Power as well on the back of this expected news flow. Uh, now that it has come through, um, we'll try and get you more details on that. This is in order to compensate the CES and the service tax, so higher Mundra UMPP tariffs in order to compensate CES and the service tax. Um, okay, Ashwini, before we talk about this in greater detail, fundamentally, technically, how are you positioned on a name like Tata Power? It's now up almost 1.5%. See, it uh, went up to as high as 100, again fell back to 85. So broadly, it's, you know, 80 to 100 type of stock. I don't think uh, most news flows really change the trend on Tata Power. Okay. Uh, Rajat, good afternoon to you. What are your trading ideas? I have two trading ideas. So one is Bajaj Finance. I, Maruti uh, March Futures I'm selling. Uh, here, my uh, stop loss is below 1645. I'm buying Bajaj Finance and targets are 1682 and 1695. And Bajaj Auto March Futures I'm selling. 
with a stop above 3075 and the targets of 3006 and 2976. Uh, uh, I don't see Bajaj uh, Auto sustaining above uh, say 3050 to about 3075 range and hence this sell call. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, thanks a lot for that. Those are a couple of uh, trading ideas coming in. Uh, Rajat, just wanted to get your thoughts on a couple of these um, auto names as well. Uh, names like Ashok, Leyland, etc. Uh, hitting new highs. A lot of auto ancillary stocks doing well. Anything you like from that space? See, one uh, auto ancillary I like is uh, Endurance. Endurance Technologies, uh, in my view, it's a good medium-term pick and uh, I, for one, uh, look at it that it is actually headed for much higher levels. Stop say, uh, one year target for me would be 1750, and uh, uh, you can put a stop loss wherever you are comfortable, anywhere around 1200 or so. And regarding also Clayland, I would say that uh, it is showing uh, some traction. 141. Uh, 85 now if it were to maintain above 139 140 then it is headed for say 153 to about 156 in fact it could even go uh, going forward to something like 175 to 180 but a any position that you take uh, if you buy for delivery your stop loss should be below 130 because if it were to fall again below 129 then it uh, it would become weak again and it can slide down even further all right, gentlemen, thanks very much for your trading ideas. Let's revisit that story on Tata Power. Uh, in news just in, CERC has allowed the company to raise tariff for power from the Mundra UMPP. Anisha tracks uh, that sector and the company closely. Anisha, um, uh, what's the impact that you uh, see? Well, actually, Samira, this is not a very big deal. The much that I've read, the notice, of course, 40, 50 page long, so I'll have to go through the details. But on the face of it, it looks like only some of the taxes and levies have been allowed. And that was not a major question or overhang because it was always expected that this is a just a tax or a levy and that will be allowed. It's not the increase of the actual tariff or there has been no change in calculation. As far as uh, the initial reading is concerned, I would like to uh, say that because there's a 40 page long notice that I have to go through. They have just allowed the service tax on transportation of goods, they have allowed the levy of Swachh Bharat says and the Krishi Kalyan says. So I don't see that as a major, uh, you know, breather for the company because the issue of Mundra losses continue, the issue of uh, uh, the, the tariff being uh, low and the under recoveries being there continues. It's only the taxes which were levied, they have been passed on, which is a very usual uh, business as usual for them. So I don't see it as a major positive, but I'll just go through the entire notice and tell you if there's any incremental news from that. The most important would be if there's any change as far as the tariffs are concerned. Right. But as of now, there's nothing that's come through. That's a very important clarification. Uh, we'll wait for you to and go the through that. Yeah, off. it's actually come <laughs> off after the clarification that came in from uh, Anisha. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, but moving on, Baba Ramdev's Patanjali Ayurved is eyeing a, a much larger slice of the export pie. We learned from sources that the company is working on introducing more products and ramping up exposure to newer markets to grow export revenues to 3,000 crores by 2019. Priya Sheet is here. Uh, Priya, it was just a low-hanging fruit for Patanjali, right? The Indian diaspora is huge abroad. Um, tell us more. Well, absolutely. In fact, Patanjali Ayurved is looking at a large-scale export strategy. At present, the company clocks a revenue of about 400 to 500 crore rupees through the export buys, what we do understand from our sources. And the company is looking at scaling this up to close to 3,000 crore rupees by 2019. Uh, that's the end of the year that we do understand from our sources. Now, here's what the company is planning to do. The company is looking at building a large-scale global distribution network and also putting in place a supply chain to ensure that there is a presence in the offline mode uh, before they go online in global markets. They're also working on a differential packaging as well as labeling strategy uh, to adhere to the international norms. Now, as of now, about 12 categories of products we understand are exported to different markets and the company is looking at ramping this up significantly in a phase-wise manner. Now, the countries that they're targeting include Middle East, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, as well as US and Canada. These are the primary markets that the company wants to focus on going ahead. And they're also looking at uh, you know offshore manufacturing units now as of now they already have a manufacturing unit in Nepal now they're looking at scaling this up uh, to countries like Africa as well as Bangladesh this is a strategy that the company has been working on in order to make products uh, slightly more affordable to um, their uh, to other countries as well in fact we did uh, reach out to Patanjali Ayurved and the company has confirmed that it is focused on growing its exports to several more countries 
All right, uh, Priya, thanks very much for that. A quick break, but more on the market is lined up next. Do stay tuned.